Welcome back, guys, to the MLG stream covering the Acer Team Story Cup. Uh, we're here in game number eight between Liquid and Millennium. I'm joined by Pee Wee here, uh, doing some great casting with me. And now we, we, we're on pretty much what's, what's match point uh, for Liquid. If, if Hero wins this, it's, it's over, and they win 5-3. Yeah, definitely. And, of course, if 4GG wins it, we have the ace yet again for the, the revive player for Liquid. The countdown has started. Uh, here we go. So the map is going to be Whirlwind, and when we, we briefly talked about, you know, or I briefly mentioned, you know, late game, it's great for Protoss with pile and warping spots. But there's a lot of open ground, which is typically good for the mid-game Terran engagements. You know, they can kind of spread out and kite a little bit, a little bit easier. Uh, which, who, who would you think that this map would favor between these two players? Um, well, I was about to say it, it kind of depends a little bit, on, in my opinion, on the spawn points. Um, and if we look at the map right now, it kind of favors Hero a little bit. Um, I was going to say because, of course, between the, the main and the third base is an absolute nightmare to deal with for drops because, you know, they just pick up, jump into your main and do damage. But Hero's not going to take the third towards his opponent. He should take the third towards or below his uh, natural. And then doing that type of, um, you know, drop play, uh, you know, into the third and stuff like that is, you know, it's not viable because, of course, the, the third isn't in that location. So Hero, I think, has a good spot. But, of course, this map is still... I, I think, overall, this map is a little bit... Terran favored, but in these positions it gives Hero that little, you know, it's not as disadvantaged a yeah. disadvantage for him. Um, I I mean, I think the best bond for Protoss is cross bond. Yeah. Um, just because it takes Terran further to get yeah. to you, and uh, if you do survive to that super late game, uh, with, with, with four different spawn locations, it gets pretty hard for Terran to go past four bases. Uh, of course, that's talking pretty far into the game. Uh, we'll, we'll see if he even gets to that point. 4G known for being particularly aggressive, so uh, he, he loves a lot of timing attacks, and uh, on this, this is a map where the third base, um, you know, you pointed out a hero can take one that's a little further away from 4GG, but also, um, even just disregarding draw play, just basic frontal attacks, the third base is fairly open, because it's yeah. that area kind of between your natural and third, that's, you kind of have to control that zone if you want to defend all your bases. Yeah, uh, so like that third base is, is far away from the main, so yep. if, if a really good spot play comes out of 4GG and he brings Hero down towards his third base and then bam, like a Doom Drop goes to the main base. That can do so much damage. That can nearly you know, be a game end. And wow, we have a Nexus first for your command center first. Yeah, yeah I'm actually... Um, you know, I mean, going Nexus first is always a bit of a risk. If your opponent happened to open Reaper, you're going to take a lot of damage. Um, but I, I guess it's very smart in Whirlwind. I mean, what are the odds someone's going to open a Reaper on Whirlwind? It's, I mean, there's not, there's almost no places to jump up. So it's like the Reaper does basically nothing unless they go Nexus first. Um, so I, I think it's it's a pretty smart risk, especially against 4GG, who pretty much, I mean, he's, he's a big fan. I mean, he even went Command Center first on Star Station, right? So, um, or not this series, but I, I've seen him do it. Basically, he, he's a big Command Center first guy. Uh, yeah. So Hero does go with the scout. He is going to scout his opponent quite, last, uh, quite late, as he is scouting him last. Does run down there with some minerals. I don't know about you, but that's just like a little bit of OCD. It's like, no, you meant to take minerals from your opponent and not give them to him. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny because that actually happens a lot. Yeah, like <laughs> almost thirty percent of the time. Little things I see it, and I was just like, no. It's five like if minerals. You see a drone make a building with it. Oh. Oh yeah. This this, and those are five minerals you never get back, right? It's not yes. like. Yeah, it's not like uh, it turns and makes the building cheaper when you when you construct it or something. It's <laughs> that'd, just that'd be sick. You know, right, I, so, actually, oh, if wow. if you're a drone, you build a building and, and then you cancel it. Do you still have the minerals in your hand? I don't know entirely, yeah. but actually, we have three racks incoming for four GG, so he's really ramping up the aggression. Or he's going to have a lot of early units in case he thinks there's something is coming out, um, you know, aggressive out of here. He actually walked right by the nexus. He didn't actually. It wasn't revealed, even though he just walked right past it. That's yeah, I mean. Yeah. I I think he's he's figured it out just from the the timing of stuff in the base. In yeah. fact, there's only Zeld out. Um, but yeah, it's it's oh, and there's proxy ponds going up on the left side of the base as well, or left side of the map. That could be really dangerous for 4 GG uh, later on in the game. Of course, it's not gonna play a super big role early on. All right, of course, Hero does know where his opponent is through process of elimination. Of course, he's not on the bottom right, not on the bottom left. So he's gotta be in the top left. Tech Lab is being added on as the guys have been mining for quite a while, and that should be, of course, your stim. And there it is as he hits 100 gas. He has a lot of units. He could actually do 
Like it, if he if he moves out with Stim, he could have a really nice type in. And oh. like, do you know where you force the photon overcharge? Sometimes, like if you yep. have Stim, you could just burst in and kill the Nexus anyway. Or just kill um, a bunch of probes or something, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it looks and, like he's uh, actually going for a little bit of a faster timing. Uh, he's going for concussive shells very early on, a single Marauder, and then the rest is all Marines, and he's hiding the Marauder from the Mothership Corps as well. So I, I think Hero might be thinking, oh, it's a normal three barracks, you know, he, he sees a bunch of Marines, so he knows it's three barracks, right? But yeah. and, and he's thinking it could be that stim time you're talking about, which which you do see sometimes, but in fact it's going to hit much earlier. Does he even, I mean, his, his, his Mothership Corps is totally across the map. If he recalls, he won't have energy or photon overcharge. He only has two sentries. This could be a game ending timing right here. It really could. Now, we do have a, only 100 NG on the Mothership Core anyway, just now. So, it, like, oh my god, the sentries are running outside. They're gonna oh, maybe no. get off guard. Hero should have maybe spotted that, but he it's gonna be too late. He's pretty much going for a very aggressive full gate after the expansion, you know, based on the Nexus Fist. And it's just. He has to open units. There is no stim. Marines can get kited, but the Marauder with the concussive shells makes it so much harder. The probes trying to get this around. There are proxy pylons and stuff on 4GG side of the map, so Hero can follow this up if he doesn't die first. Yeah, I mean, Hero, Hero is going to defend us. He did take some damage, but uh, let's actually look at how much. So, he only lost two workers, but he did lose a, a couple units as well. It's a fairly even trade, I would say, but 4GG was also able to kind of identify. I mean, if, if you look at his vision, I think he's able to see every single barracks, right? He, he, saw, he saw four gateways, he saw them being corona boosted, so he, he knows there, there's this gateway follow-up, and he's actually giving up the low ground, which I love. I think it's just a, it's a great response to this. Of course, as long yeah, as he can very keep the orbit alive. Hell is like so badly. Yeah, it's it's uh it's a little bit a little bit laggy right now. Luckily, none of the players are making critical micro decisions right now. So, um, hopefully it'll be fine. Uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see if this can be resolved. I think it but might be me. Um, so say, am I am I going robotic? No, no, you you sound fine. I think I think you're fine. And no one's name has popped up, so it's hard to tell um, who's exactly doing it. Uh, we'll see if we can we can get that resolved, but um, on to the actual, like, well, let's talk about what's going on right here. So, it was an even trade, right, with, with, with units lost, basically what happened, but 4GG identified the fact that Hero was staying very low tech, and 4GG, he has Stim and shot on the way, he has Medivacs on the way. If he survives, he's going to have an army that pure gateway units with, you know, no charge, no blink, it, it, it are going to be very weak against, right? Yeah. I mean, so... I, I really love the way that he decided to give up the expansion and said, as long as I keep the orbit alive, I'll be fine. Um, looks like we're gonna try, I'm going to try it again. Hopefully the, the latency issues are, are resolved. Um, if they're not, at least hopefully we can, we can figure out there's there's someone in there. Um, sometimes Bowman just has a spike or two here or there. Yeah. Uh, but in this situation, we see Hero realizes what's happening. He realizes, okay, he probably might not be able to kill his opponent with this push, but he did some economic damage. And now we can see he's transitioning out of his game, Double Forge and Twilight Council. Yeah. Now, like, amazingly enough, the supplies are in Hero's favor. He's getting the Double Forge. Really smart way to play this up, especially with the charge. Uh, or the, sorry, the Twilight, which is probably for charge. But the upgrades, you know, gives him long, uh, longativity in this game. The longer the game goes on, the better he's going to be. And, ooh, that did not get spotted. That Double Medivac drop did not get spotted. That is a very big deal, actually. Um, and I was going to say as well, of course, Hero actually has 14 worker advantage right now. Which is huge. Yeah, it, it's quite a big work advantage. Of course, Hero did spot all the SCVs going to the bunker at the top, and that kind of tells him his opponent doesn't have units there, which tells him there's a drop play. So um, uh, he immediately starts heading back, but his militia core is not with the army. Okay, now he's grouping up. He's got to get that recall in as soon as possible. And there is 200 energy, so it can fall to an overcharge, but a lot oh. of workers are going to get killed off here. Oh, he got the Mothership Core as it warped in, so that's a nice little snipe. Yeah, and, and he got a couple worker kills there as well, going from uh, two workers killed to six. Now he's retaking his natural, so, yeah. uh, you know, that, that was a nice move by 4GG. He's still down by 11 workers, but right now his army is so much stronger than heroes. He's got four medevacs. I mean, in, in, in actual army value, um, they're almost identical, but... As far as the, the tech behind the army, right? He has Stim and Combat Shield done. He's got four Medivacs with it. And Hero, he's got all this stuff on the way. Charging 1-1, one, one, but it's not done quite yet. Four Medivacs flying in here. There are four Stalkers. He can just go for it anyway. One of the Medivacs does get targeted down. There are about five units in that. The rest of the units are getting dropped. Of course, there is no full turn overcharge available for uh, the Nexus. And Sentry's up here getting some decent force fields, but locking a lot of the Zalots out. Of course, 
one one and ooh, charges about to finish in 15 seconds that makes this much more scarier for the Terran player yeah it does you know uh, if there was four medevacs I, I think hero might have just died there but uh, he went in for the drop and, uh, and the stalkers picked off two of the medevacs before they could even really get all the units out and it's still a, a, a decent trade for 4GG but I, I don't think he's going to win the game here is it oh actually wait two more medevacs coming in with reinforcements dropping more units Against just sentries and stalkers, this could be very... Oh, he's even picking up the hurt marauder and, and leaning it to keep it alive. Wow, 4 uh, gg really turned the pressure. for photo overcharge. It gets dropped immediately there. Nice reaction from hero. And the boost gets dropped onto the medevac so they do escape with their lives. But that was uh, that was really good. You know, 4GG does have the supply lead now. He has um, the units lost is in his favor as well. So he's looking very good. But he doesn't have... Command he doesn't have eBay's either, so yeah. he's going to fall behind very, very badly to um, the upgrade of the Double Forge of I, Hero. I'd actually love to see him just pull his SCVs right now. I think he would win the game if he did that. Uh, if he could I hit so, before so. Storm, I mean, he pretty much has to hit before Storm, because once Storm gets up, you know, he has, like you mentioned, zero upgrades, but he's pushing in straight now. Oh, feedbacks go down, there's Archons being morphed, but Hero doesn't have too many units, and there's some pretty good cutting coming down here by 4GG. Two of the medevacs do fall there, of course, they were low from the... The feedbacks probes are coming off the line. There's only three stalkers and an arc on here, and they are trying to target down the the medevac to stop that healing. But there's just so many units here. The supply is definitely in 4GG's favor. Two archons, one does fall. The probes getting vaporized as they close the distance, and this is looking very good for 4GG. But it looks like he will be pushed back for the moment. Yeah, it's pretty much a race. Him, though. Yeah, it's it's he got a good number of probe kills there. Up to 23 workers killed so far. He's definitely now, he's actually ahead by five workers. You you add a mule today, he's got the economic advantage, but he's still behind in tech. There's now 1 1 upgrades done for the Protoss. There's charge. Oh, the Archon gets focused down. Great micro there by 4GG. Nice. It still stays alive. There is one High Templar with 70 energy right now. As you said, Storm is done. There is another High Templar moved in somewhere, I think, at the, the pylon in the main base. But this High Templar has the energy, you could get a nice storm, is he gonna get it? I think he will, yes! Oh, a couple of Marines do go down, the Medivacs take a bit of damage, and the units are dwindling very fast for 4 GG, the Medivac need to get target down, but it does get boosted, and stays alive. Yeah, you know, even though 4 GG is, is ahead in supply, he's fighting with very hurt bio units with 0-0 yeah. zero, zero upgrades, uh, and the Medivacs he only has, he has two out right now, but it's a situation where the Protoss units are, are out upgrading him, so in the long run, Hero will win, but oh, look at this. There's a lot of red crossing the map, and it's mostly SCVs. 4GG, oh, he takes out the Templar, but it's a pretty good storm. And that Templar does run forward, gets picked off at the last second. There is another one just behind the Nexus. I think that is the only one it is. And we do have two Archons. And then a... No, Futon Overcharge isn't available. The time will be, and a bunch of Zalots. A couple of Zalot warpins into the natural. Distracting the forces of 4GG for a moment there. And you know, a moment is big because uh, the, those Templar in a natural hero, one of them has 72 energy. Now, 4GG was, was attacking right now. He might have a couple seconds for a storm. There's yeah. going to be one storm in the battle. The other Templar had 60 energy, so it may not quite have storm. Looks like. He's natural to make sure he doesn't get caught off guard. He could get another storm, get ready. There it is. And a lot of damage being dealt there as well. Eight a bit of that there. And the medevacs get picked off. They don't have that much to heal. And I think this could be GG as it gets pulled. There we and go. 4 GG uh, knew, knew he pretty much had to win with that attack. And, you know, Hero just was able to survive just long enough uh, to get enough storms and to just keep warping units in. Towards the end, he was just being more cost efficient because of the upgrades and, and the low medevac count of 4GG. Yeah, that, that was really well played by Hero. Um, that was a really interesting game because, of course, they they both went you know, command centers first or nexus first, and then they both went for quite aggressive strategies. The four gate, the uh, like a concussive shells time in in a sense, and then it was really weird how it all worked out. Then he camped his opponent's natural. 4GG forced him out of his natural by going for the drop, and then of course he. It was non-stop aggression from that point on, and um, really well played by Hero that, you know, managed to stay alive. It was. That was, you know, that's a lot of Protoss had been that spot where you go for the early gateway attack, but then you're just that zone when they have medevacs, they have stim and combat shield, and, and you're, you know, you have the double forge and twilight on the way, but you've got about a minute to defend with just basic gateway units, and Hero just was barely able to defend. I think it was so huge that 
Um, instead of going for the front, 4UG went for the drop, and then I was going for that drop of the, f the first four medevacs. Uh, two of the medevacs died, and one of them even died with half the units inside it, and then the other one was picked off. And, and w without that heal, and also without room to kite, because he was into Protoss main instead of you know pushing towards the front of the natural, uh, Hero was able to kind of at least get some damage done with that basic gateway army. Yeah. So that is it. Uh, Liquid do win over Millennium, and that was you know a close one. I didn't know entirely who would take it. I thought maybe Liquid, just because it's Liquid and they have Hero and Tasia. So I mean, as far as standings go, it's important to realize both these teams were two one going into this. Uh, and of course, the, the primary thing is your wins and loss, and then the map score, of course, comes in uh, secondary with the rankings. But this is going to put Millennium down at 2-2, two, two, and Liquid's going to be at 3-1. And 3-1 and is, is a score where they can be in that top four team list. And, and top four is where everyone's aiming to go. Uh, of course, the, the, the way it works is um, the, the playoffs, you basically have to be top four to get into the playoffs. Now, there is, I think there's a wild card um, somewhere in there. No, I think it's actually, no, sorry, it's top four to get in the playoffs, but then if you're like five, six, or seven, you can stay in, in the league for next season, whereas if you're at the very bottom, then, of course, you have to re-qualify. Um, so, but top four spot is, is not easy to get. I mean, if, if you look at uh, the, the, the teams in this, you've got a lot of, like, I mean, you've got Western Wolves have been dominating. They've had yeah. San doing great work for them. Quantic Gaming uh, has been dominating as well. Uh, Axiom has been doing very, very well. So it's just all of these these teams with the very Korean heavy rosters. Liquid is up there as well, you know, with Hero and Tasia. And now with that win, they actually jumped from they were spot six. Now they're spot three in the lineup. So you can tell one one series can mean a huge difference. Of course, uh, I think we're in week five right now, uh, and, and then the series the season is is nine weeks long. So it's not like Liquid's guaranteed to make the playoffs at, at this point. But at this point, as long as they continue with the rate they're going, they'll make the playoffs. Whereas Millennium at 2-2, you know, you, you, you can't have an even record to make the playoffs. They're going to have to they're gonna have to win more than they lose from here on out if they want to make that playoff spot. Yeah, definitely. The, it, it, it's so weird how it all switches up. Like, Western Wolves were decimating. They're like they're at the top uh, now still, but uh, Quantic were quite low down, and then they got two really important games, and Quantic Hyun actually all killed Western Wolves. I mean, that was, that was a big move, right? Because yeah. Western Rules was a number one team at, at that point. Well, I mean, they're still actually still the number one team, but uh, they're not the number one team by a mile now. They're actually uh, in, in, in series scores tied with, with Quantic right now. So uh, that's it for the Acer team stuff, Corey. Acer team, Acer team coverage here. <laughs> Worth, lost my words there. <laughs> Acer team story cup. Um, I think we'll be again. Uh, we might cover some more of this next week. Of course, we have some other stuff coming up later this week. This weekend in particular, the IM Singapore qualifiers. Uh, but thank you so much for casting with me, Pee Wee. Uh, why don't you give a shout out? Where can people find you on YouTube? Where can they, you know, give them your, your Twitter? They see it on the screen, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. mention it out right, as well. So my YouTube is a bit it's old school. It's maybe Pee Wee, with, you know, the word maybe. Uh, Facebook is Pee Wee SC2. And I'm, like, I'll give them a shout out. I'm on trial um, with Team Fanatic at the moment. So go check out Fanatic at Fanatic.com. All right, awesome. Well, thank you uh, so much again for, for casting with B. Um, I hope we get to do some more of this uh, in the future. In fact, with, with five more weeks, I'm sure we'll do some more in the future. Um, but anyways, that's it. Uh, it'll be rebroadcast coming right up in just a minute or two.